Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, LSP Spectra, here with another video on Wayward Terran Frontier. This time I'm continuing my tutorial series, and we're going to be talking about weapons. That's right, turrets, missiles, and beams. Um, all, have, all have their complications and simplicities. I'm going to go through them the best I can. Uh, and, but before I get to that, I want to make a quick little, quick little announcement thing. George Holtgren, the developer of this game, has a YouTube channel, and he just recently came out with a video about power. Um, I recently did a tutorial on power, and if you haven't checked it out, I suggest you do. But if you are still confused about power and how it works, um, and you maybe want to understand that maybe a little bit better because he explains it really well, I highly suggest you, you go check out that video. I will leave a link to it in the description below this video. So I really suggest you go check it out. It's really it's really interesting to hear about how the code deals with power and everything. And uh, he, for very good reasons, explains it very well. I mean, he's developing the game, so he should know, and he does, and he explains it really well. Anyways, on to weapons. First, I'm going to talk about turrets, then missiles, then beams. So if you need to skip to the video, you can skip accordingly. Um, and then I'll show you this little shindig at the end. Uh, anyways, turrets. So as you can see, you have lots of different turrets. Uh, this is the weapons tab right here in this corner. Um, these right here are basically placeholders. These are what the turret mounts used to look like. I don't suggest you use them. I didn't even bother testing to see if they work, but you should really just stick to the ones that he's actually going to use. These may be replaced by something else in the future, but I wouldn't bother. Uh, but essentially you got uh, your little uh, turret track, which I'll explain in a little bit. You've got your tiny turret, your small turret, and then it goes medium, large, and heavy ballistic. Medium, large, heavy ballistic. Now, the only difference between all the turret mounts is the type of gun they can hold. So if you click on it and you go to click it down, it gives you an option of what you can put on there that you have. Um, so if I... If I click on the heavy ballistic, oh boy, let's just replace this one. You have these ones, you can get a six, 620 millimeter triple cannon. It's pretty insane. Now, when you select it, this little blue light, let me get rid of that, will turn blue. Now, if you didn't select anything and there's no gun actually on the turret, it will be red right here. That's how you can tell whether you've mounted anything. Now, another thing with these turrets, obviously, when you place a weapon, you need to attach it to your... Uh, command module. So they have little squares in here in the middle of all the turrets where you can place it. Very nice convenient spot. It's the only weapon that does, it's the only weapon type that does this. Everything else you just have to place along the outside. Now you can still place along the outside but why bother when you can place it right there in the middle. It just makes more sense. Um, the other special thing is that there's a large ballistic, uh, heavy ballistic mount as you can see, it's got hallways in it, which makes it much easier to put it in your, you know, in your uh, ship when you're choosing how to navigate through it and be able to get to different parts of the ship. Uh, so that's, in my opinion, super convenient with something that large. Um, it just makes things a lot easier with hallways. Um, now, when you're placing the turret, as you can see, you get these blue lines. Now, if we isolate one of these, you might be able to see it a little bit better. So if we Get rid of this when you place this one. You can see how it places all of these little uh, blue dots. These didn't used to exist in the version before this. You just had to guess where to place these. This is where you place turret tracks, which is what I have selected right here, which is right this, which is this right here. Now, without placing any turret tracks, this turret can only shoot straight, and that's in this direction over here. It can only shoot that way. Now, when you start to add turret tracks, that means the turret can start to rotate. Now, if obviously if you place all of them in all of these blue squares, you'll be able to rotate 360. But if you decide to only place a couple, let's say I place one right here. Now, what does that do? It allows the turret to rotate towards the opposite direction of the turret track. So that means with this place, this with this place right here, this turret can now rotate this direction um, that many degrees, essentially in that. Uh, that much space. So if I place them all right here, this turret can now shoot straight and to the right. I'm hoping this is making sense. If I do all of this section down here, it can rotate uh, 180 degrees to the front. It cannot shoot anywhere behind it because there's no turret track. Obviously, if you keep adding more, you add more spaces. So because I placed one here, you can now go across the turret and it can now shoot to right here. It cannot shoot this direction. 
cannot shoot this direction, this direction, or this direction, this you, you get the idea. Now you may be asking why wouldn't I just always want the turret to rotate 360 degrees? Let me tell you, there's a couple reasons why you may want to, may not want to. One, you don't have space. You've placed the turret in a very cramped spot because of your limited space on your ship, but you want the turret there. And so you can only get so many turrets uh, there in the first place. You may have a situation where you place it too close to the edge because you have to. You can't place turret mounts out here. No big deal. It's okay. Um, another reason is you may want to limit where the turret can actually shoot because of power reasons. So you may only want to say this turret can only shoot to the left of the ship uh, when there's an enemy on the left side of the ship. So that way I'm not using up all my power at the same time. Another reason might be when you select groups and you have crew members, you only want the crew shooting in certain directions. The, the possibilities are endless, but essentially that's what the turret tracks do. It's pretty simple. Um, the only one that doesn't require uh, turret tracks is the tiny fixed ballistic. It only shoots straight no matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you do, it's always just going to shoot straight, so sorry. Um, now, next... Now, I, I'm going to say this. Power-wise, um, if we come down here to this little display, you can see I have it wired up. When you read the description, there's no real way to tell how much power it requires before it can shoot. And I, I hate to say it, but I still don't know exactly. In the old system, there wasn't clips. As you know now, when you shoot, you eventually empty your clip and your gun has to reload. It didn't used to be that way. It used to be you shot as fast as power could be supplied to the turret, to where some turrets required 60 energy per shot and as soon as you got 60 energy you could shoot and so what you do is you just supply as much power as you possibly could if you wanted to shoot fast now it's it's really hard for me to say because when you go to a station you can reload your ammunition and so i don't know if power is only used when you're reloading but it seems like power is used when you're shooting so i hate to say it but it's really hard to tell so what i would do is i would at least get one line of power to your turret, if not two, if you can help it. Um, and just make sure it has an ample opportunity to get as much power as it needs. Until George Holtgren releases a video about it or releases more information in the game about it, there's nothing I can do unless one of you guys know. Please leave a comment in the, in the, on the video if you do know so we can clear this up. But that's essentially how it is. Now, um, that's kind of it about turrets. If you have any more questions, please ask them. Uh, in the comment section. They're pretty simple, uh, but we're going to go ahead and move on to missiles. These are the different missile components you have. It's in this section right here in the same weapons tab. You've got just the regular missile tube, uh, the missile tube with a loader, and then you've got uh, the missile factory and the uh, basically the missile clip. It just says placeholder tool, name, tool tip name, but it's basically the missile clip. It's what holds missiles. Um, so let's go down to our little missile section that we have. Now, Obviously, this tube right here is a one-shot time only. You can shoot it once, and the only way to reload it is if you go back to the station and reload it. Even if you have a clip behind it, it is not going to reload, no matter what you do, because it does not have a reloader. That's what these ones are for, as you can see over there. Now, what happens is you have your missile tube, and you've got these arrows. Now, the arrows will pull a new missile from that direction, so directly behind it. Um, and there has to be a clip there with a missile in it in order to uh, pull from it. Now, the clips will be automatically reloaded when you reload at the station, so don't worry about that. Now, this side is the, is the different configurations and distance from the missile loader that you can do. You can be right behind it, one behind it, and two behind it, off to the side to the right, off to the side to the left. These are the ways it can work. It will not load from the sides, and it will not load any further back uh, it has to be within three. This is outside of three. Anywhere outside of three uh, blocks, I guess you'd say squares away, it will not reload from that clip. Um, so you have to kind of plan for that accordingly. But he does give you that awesome leeway of distance between here. So you can put wiring if you need to um, and stuff like that. Now, for the clips themselves, you cannot... Uh, they pull from each other, and we'll talk about that in a second over here. But in the configuration, they cannot have any spaces between them. They can be offset like right here, so you can just keep squiggle lining it if you need to. You can go diagonal like this if you need to. But they cannot have any spaces in between, or they will not 
reload from each other. So now onto the reloading mechanism. So when this missile uh, to pulls a missile, it pulls it from this one, then this clip pulls it from this one, this one until all of them have moved up accordingly until the last one is empty and cannot pull anymore. So how do they pull from each other? They pull directly from behind. So as you look, when you look at, geez, when you look at one of the missile clips, you see the little arrow. That is the direction it is going and opposite of that arrow is where it's going to pull from. That's the only real information you know. You just need to know where it's pulling from, and that's opposite of the direction of the arrow. So this configuration right here works. So this one pulls from the one behind it. This one pulls away from behind it, and this is where it gets confusing. This arrow is pointing to nothing, but it is pulling from this one, and it is getting pulled by this one. So it works. It will not work like this where the arrows are all pointing towards a clip. They will not reload that way. It's a little bit confusing, and I constantly might finding myself having to delete and replace. So just be very careful and think about it. It's, I mean, even for me, and I've known this for a while, it still gets confusing for me. Just doing this part, I, I redid this twice just because I messed up. I mean, it's just gonna happen, so sorry, but that's the way things are, and it's, it's a little bit confusing, but if you just sit there and think about it, you'll eventually get it, trust me. <laughs> it kinda sucks that it's, it's, it confuses your mind a little bit with that arrow, but, uh, It'll all work out. Um, now, that's pretty much it with missile tubes. Uh, when you launch, when you fire them, it's just pressing and holding E, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, but missiles are pretty simple. Oh, the factory! I almost forgot about the factory. Sorry. Uh, the missiles will require missile tubes will require power to launch. They have little conduits. It's a very minuscule amount of power, so just make sure they're connected. It's not super. It's not super amount of energy by any means. But here's the factory. So the factory requires it can consume 120 energy per second, <coughs> and it will uh, create one missile every 600 energy. Now there are four places where missiles will come out. Right here, right there, and right there, right there. Those are where the missiles will load into clips. So if you place missiles other places, they will not get filled, no matter what you do. Um, so make sure they're in the track, those track areas, they call them, it's, I've, in the past they were called missile tracks, I don't know if they're still called that, but essentially the magazines. Uh, so missile factory is mostly just for really large ships, um, you probably won't mess with it too much unless you're building in a large ship like I have right here, um, so, yeah. Let's move on to beams, now beams are a little bit complicated and hard to figure out. I had to sit there and play with it for a good half hour before I completely figured it out. But here we go, we're gonna explain it. So you just arrow over to the next page on this tab and you got beams. Now here are all the beam components. You've got two things. You've got controllers and you got embedders. Now two of the controllers are not completely made yet um, as you can see by this. So I don't know of any way to use them, so I wouldn't bother with them, but you do have two. You got the yellow and the cyan beam controller. Now, it's kind of funny. They're scaled in awesomeness. I think that's really great. I hope he keeps that in. I hope that never changes because I really love that scaling. So awesomeness one is the cyan beam. Uh, awesomeness two is yellow beam, and then we obviously have a four, and it jumps all the way up to 11. Can't wait to get that one. Essentially, awesomeness means just how big it is and how much damage it does. There's no exact specific number or anything like that, but, you know, it works. So basically, you have to have a controller, which is the computer <coughs> that essentially allows the emitters to work. So it's like having this being your, your what produces the beam, and the emitters are what shoots out the beam is the best way to explain it. Um, they all require power, and you can see the different beams. We've got different ones. We've got different sizes, and you got the angled ones and the straight. Now essentially what happens, and this is where I'm going to come down to this, uh, the beams are oriented, you orient them in the direction you want to shoot. So if you want to shoot straight, you have to put beams like this one facing forward. Now depending on how many emitters you have, depends on how will supply you with how much damage and how long it will go. So it says right here, so the more emitters you have facing in the same direction, the longer you'll be able to uh, sustain a continuous beam in that direction. So no damage, sorry. It's just how long you can shoot. It, it prolongs the amount of time you can. the beam is active. And I'll show you the beam here in a minute. That's why I have this all set up. But 
as you can see they require power now you do not need to connect the emitters to the controllers in any way shape or form it's uh, completely you could say wireless <laughs> they do not need to be connected however the controllers do need to be connected to your uh, console what is it called I think it's called a console anyways where you control the ship just like all the other turrets do including these turrets I don't know if I said that but you do have to put a controller essentially one of these things next to them anywhere you do have to do that same with here as you can see I've got two right there now the emitters we do not need to do any such thing it does not matter but back to the emitters what you need to do is you need to decide which directions you want to shoot so this configuration right here I can shoot forward and to the left I cannot shoot to the right to the back right to the bottom to the behind me to the left or the bottom left cannot do it will not let you so based on how your ship is you can place some in the corners over here corners over here up here wherever you kinda want it will when you get to a certain direction it will pick one of the emitters and shoot from it although all the emitters in that direction will work in unison uh, you will not see multiple beams typically coming uh, from multiple ones that are facing the same direction in the same area. Now if I had two over here and two over here, you'll probably get two beams. I haven't tested it too much, <clears throat> but I'm sure you'd get two beams. But it's essentially in the same area you have beams, you get one laser. It's typically how it works. Um, now the beam, now the emitters do require uh, power. They have a capacity of 15 and they have a charge rate of 13. So they need power and enough power to actually shoot the beam, which is where the more power they get and the more beams you have, uh, the more uh, the longer the beam will stay active, which is important. Now the controllers themselves also require uh, power, although it, it doesn't seem to say how much, so I'm assuming it's a pretty minuscule amount. It's more the emitters that are the power suckers for this. Now you may look at this and say, man, how am I going to choose? I want turrets. I want beams, I want missiles. Missiles aren't much of a problem because you shoot those with E, but you do shoot both the turrets and the beams with your right click. How are you going to choose which ones you you can shoot? Well, you don't have to. I'm going to show you how you do that. So if I click save, exit, go to a test ship, I'm in here uh, in my little very inefficient ship, but as you can see, power went to everything, so it's all good. They've got a really cool animation every few seconds I really like it but if I hop in here over here you see you got missiles and emitters now I'm going to now when you press R you see this changes now when you press R again in the emitters you got two emitters and it just stays as, as emitters so it's hard to know which emitter you're on but if I'm on turrets and I shoot it shoots the turret as you can see I'll even zoom in for you you can sh see it shooting the turret now if I press R again, it shoots the yellow beam. I press R again, it shoots the cyan beam. <coughs> Woo! We have beams. As you can see, when I rotate, it kind of switches which ones it wants to. You can see it kind of wants to try to go into these ones over here, although they're not supplied with enough power, so it doesn't like it. It doesn't want to shoot from there. But as you can see, as you would rotate, you'd be able to hit different sections. Uh, it's a very limited arc, as you can see, even from these angled ones, so you definitely need to have ones facing every single direction. Now, so you, basically you switch between weapons with R. Now, to shoot missiles, uh, if I spawn an enemy, you just press E when you've got your mouse over an enemy, and it shoots a missile. As you can see, there it goes. Now, if you want to shoot all your missiles at once, you, you put your mouse over, press and hold E, to, and then you'll hear a little beep, typically. But essentially, that launches all your missiles all at once. So you can either shoot them sequen sequentially, I don't know if that's the actual word, or you can shoot them one at a time. But the beam is pretty powerful. It tends to melt through the ship. The ship can't rotate. It doesn't have any side thrusters, so that's not going to work. But as you can see, it's just melting through the middle of the ship. Now, as you can see, the beam is stopping and starting, and that is because of the amount of power that's supplied and the amount of emitters. If I had more emitters, I'd be able to supply a much longer beam and be able to just tear through that ship instantly. Although, I pretty much did. If I are, I can have this blue beam, which is shooting a little bit nicer because it looks like it's requiring a little bit less power. So I'm assuming awesomeness also has to deal with how hard it is to sustain the beam.
So awesomeness one will be able to sustain longer, so on and so forth. As for weapons, that is pretty much it, guys. Um, if I left something out, please let me know in the description below. I feel like I covered it all pretty well, but you, you never know. Uh, if you have something to add, if it's big enough, I'll make another video about it. Anyways, guys, I hope this video was helpful. Um, leave any comments, questions, concerns, or video ideas or game ideas in the comment section below. I much appreciate it. I love seeing your guys' comments. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.